Judiciary, they scatter country, they go. They don't, they carry and they go. Let me share this video, me react. Mo, watch this video together. Hell! Oh, my obedient family, Mo, now watch this video, eh? Mo, watch out together. Welcome to Big Things God TV. Well, um, we were here on Wednesday. The court gave us Wednesday as a day to come for our ruling. And then we were given the same information that the court was attending a conference and that the ruling had been adjourned to today. So I take it that at the time they were adjourning to today, they already knew that they would be out of whatever conference they were going to have. So we're here back today and they are giving us the same excuse of the court attending a conference. Um, we don't think that that is a fair way to treat us. You see, this thing, everybody has rights. I think the, the impression that as litigants, as people who approach the court, we have no rights. We are absolutely at the mercy of the system. It's a very wrong one. Respect begets respect. You have to respect me as a litigant then I will respect you as the Judex. So if the court, the way what we see is that we have not been fairly treated. I have been in Abuja for how long now? Nobody has asked me about my hotel bills. I practice from Lagos. If he wasn't going to sit, he should have told me. He should have told me on Wednesday, I'll be back in my chambers in Lagos now. But he asked me to come back today only to get the same excuse. I don't think it's fair. I don't think it's fair. And as far as I'm concerned, we are, by the grace of God, going to do something about it. Uh, in, the, in, in the sense that I think we need to sue. We need, we need, we need to bring it before the court so that it will be examined. Uh, what we have law, I mean, we, the right that we sought is to restrain this swearing in. So by the court not sitting, we've lost a, a great deal. So who is going to pay for that? You, if you came and gave a ruling that we don't have a right, it would be understandable. Now you're seemingly, seemingly staying away from the court. Makes me understand that we we'll have a right, but for one reason or the other, you cannot find the courage to declare that right. So you are now trying to use absence from the court as a means of depriving me of that right. So I'm going to sue. You're going to pay. You will pay for it. You pay for it. You are going to tell me why you left the court. And we will fight it to the Supreme Court. And maybe we will establish as a precedent that Nigerians ought not to be treated in this fashion. With all due respect to the learned Judex, for whom I have the greatest uh, respect. But like I said, you know, this ruling, it will not take two minutes. That's right. It will not take two minutes to deliver the ruling and then get back to uh, any conference that, it, I mean, is attending. You know, so what I want to say, I have said it, I have written, I have written to all the security agencies. I have written to major embassies. I have written to the American embassy. I have written to the British embassy. I have written to the French embassy, German embassy. And I have warned that you cannot make the mistake of installing an unconstitutional president in Nigeria. That's right. It would have been better that you resolve this question that we brought before the court. We are not saying that the question must be resolved in, in our favor. 
we brought the question here to be resolved. We have a right to have the question resolved. Like I always say, hearing belongs to me. Decision belongs to the court. You understand? So you cannot make the mistake of installing somebody unconstitutionally. It's an overthrow of the Constitution. That person, now if you read section 1, subsection 2 of the Constitution, it says no person or group of persons shall be permitted to take control of the federal government or any part of it, take control of federation or any part of it, except in accordance with the Constitution. That section invests every Nigerian with authority to resist whoever is sworn in. Yes. Contrary to the Constitution. That's right. Every Nigerian yes. in every station of life, yes. wherever he is, That's right. that is an order from the Constitution to that person to resist whoever is sworn in yes. unconstitutionally. Yes. So it must be that those who want to do this swearing in have conspired against democracy That's right. and want to overthrow it. Yes. The Constitution says, Section 14. Subsection 2A, that sovereignty belongs to the people of Nigeria. That's right. And they give consent to those who govern through the Constitution. So where you do not observe the Constitution, it means that you do not have the consent of the people to rule. The people have a right to say we are not going to recognize you or acknowledge you. Yes. What is coming to Nigeria is what these people, they are behaving like children, as far as I'm concerned. They are behaving like children. We all saw Shonekon here. Somebody went with a decree or word of mouth, made somebody president and commander in chief. A court, it took just one declaration from a court, and it was gone. It's the same thing that we are, oh, sorry, the same thing that we are about, we are, we are getting into. Any court in Nigeria is invested with the authority to interpret the Constitution and can say that the person who calls himself president was not duly elected That's and right. therefore cannot answer that title and cannot give any instructions right. that should be obeyed. And that would be the beginning of crisis. We have warned against this. I don't know what is making them behave, think that it's a joke. I don't know how you would take 200 million Nigerians as a joke. You know, it's not going to happen. The Constitution says you go and have a second election. But you feel too big. Like I was explaining to someone, it is the same in discipline. Where you have red lights, say stop. That's right. You feel too big because you are driving your Jeep, you don't stop. It's the same thing. That is, it is the discipline in us that we have carried over to this exercise. The Constitution says you've not made it. You've not made 25% uh, in Abuja. Nobody has told me that I'm wrong. There is no constitution, there is no court. I came to this court for the court to tell me that I'm wrong. That's right. Rather than telling me I'm wrong, the court you know, stays away from court. Mute. The court cannot even look me in the eye. So nobody has told me I'm wrong. Nobody has the courage to tell me I'm wrong. Because I am right. So the Constitution says you should go for a second election. It's a simple, very simple thing. Even as if that second election does not produce a winner, you go for a third one. You feel too big to comply with the Constitution because all your life has been a life of indiscipline. 